In a shocking Redfin report, we find that real estate commissions for agents who work with buyers have went down considerably since the National Association of Realtors settlement. Now, is this because of the increased customer awareness that they can negotiate commissions? I mean, the rules haven't even come into effect yet everywhere. Now, they have come into effect in some markets, some MLSs. So in today's video, I want to talk about where I believe real estate commissions are going to go once the rules are in full effect. And I want to talk to you about exactly what I would be doing and how I would be thinking if I were a buyer's agent in this moving into this uncertain world that we're in here. So this is going to be a great video. Let's dive right in. First, I want to dive into this article. Okay. Typical buyer agent commission earns 2.55% uh, in commissions. Okay. That's declined since the NAR settlement was announced in March. Okay. In terms of dollars, the typical buyer agent commission is $15,377 per deal. That's up. So although commission percentage is down, okay, the dollar amount is up. Why is that? It's because of rising home prices. Okay. So, so let's dig in here. Um, earlier in January, the commission rate, the average commission rate for a buyer agent was 2.62. Okay. 2.62. And now it sits at 2.55. Okay, so the first thing I think about when I look at this data is, is the fact that they got this from MLS. Okay, they get this from MLS. So moving forward, we're not going to have this information on MLS. So it's going to be really tough to cipher through, you know, the seller concessions and this, that, and the other <laughs> to try to figure this data out. In my opinion, we're not really going to have clear data. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that all shakes out, but we're not going to have clear data. We're not even going to really know. And it's going to be really difficult also to figure out which listings actually sold that that gave a buyer agent commission where the seller offered a buyer agent commission, or if they ended up negotiating one into the contract, because most areas and most contracts are only allowing this to be through seller concessions. It's going to be really hard to really figure this data out. You know, did this listing sell faster because they were offering a seller concession that the buyer could then use for whatever closing costs, commissions, whatever they wanted to use it for. It's going to be interesting to see what this data actually turns out to be at the end of the day. Uh, commissions have gradually declined over the last decade, okay, from an average of 2.89 back in 2013 to 2.66 in 2023. Okay, so over a 10 year period, it dropped from 2.89 to 2.66. Right. And then this year, it's basically went from 2.66 to 2.55. OK, so it this this is a dramatic drop. Now, this could this be because the market's such a seller's market. Right. I mean, the market has been softening this year, but yet we've seen a pretty big dip here in terms of the uh, the the percentage of buyer agents. It's possible that the news of the legal settlement of the NAR uh, in March has contributed to the recent decline by making customers more aware they can offer commissions to a buyer agent or none at all. They're talking about sellers there. Under the terms of the settlement, uh, by August 17th, listing agents may no longer advertise a unilateral offer of buyer agent commission in MLS. Uh, MLSs that are affiliated with NAR or in MLSs that have opted into the NAR settlement. That has the potential to change the home buying and selling process in various ways and make it more likely that buyer agent commissions become part of their offer negotiation. Redfin agents are reporting that commissions have been top of mind for their clients since the NAR settlement was announced. And some sellers are asking about what it would mean to offer no commission or a relatively low one. So you see, <laughs> you know, th all this happening is literally just making customers question this more. Okay. And this comes from the chief economist of Redfin. Still, even, even before the blitz of the publicity around the class action lawsuits and our settlement, commissions were coming down. Okay. That's partly because of the competitive housing market before and during the pandemic, which motivated some sellers to offer a low commission because they knew they could still attract buyers um, and, and greater fee transparency. Right. In dollar terms, we've actually went up. It was 15,377. 
uh, here recently. That's slightly up from fifteen thousand one hundred twenty-four dollars in January, and it's uh, it's went up due to home prices continuing to to increase. So all this is happening, and we're not even to the August seventeenth date yet. So there's a lot of questions in my mind as to how is this actually happening? Because um, I don't believe that there's a lot of sellers out there negotiating or offering zero commission yet um, due to the settlement. You know, I, I don't know. that That's an opinion. Who, who knows? I don't know what the data really shows. If you dig deeper and deeper into the data, it would be interesting. Um, but where do we go from here? Okay, I'm going to give you my opinion. We'll love to hear your, your opinions in the comments. And th there's, a, there's so many different directions that this can go in anybody that tells you they know what's going to happen they and they're confident that that is the 100 percent going to happen they're living in a dream world we have no idea how the market's going to respond to this how cu customers are going to respond to this um it's going to be a little bit of a mess in the beginning because you're going to have agents who disagree on how things are supposed to be you've got different brokerages who allow this and mls's that allow that and uh there's all kinds of conflicting information, even coming from the higher ups in the process. So it's going to take a while for the dust to settle from this to really figure out what the new norm is going to be and how we're going to operate as an industry. What do I think it's going to go? Well, what they literally did was they moved the negotiation of the buyer agent commission that the sell, basically the, the listing agent basically determined it because like in my market, I'm sure your market as well, there's a lot of listing agents that like take more. So they'll take a 6% listing and then they'll keep three and a half and give two and a half. They literally just decide I'm worth more than the buyer agent. I'm going to charge more. All right. Or, I'm going to keep more just because I can. Um, I mean, in my, my opinion, the buyer agent is just as valuable and arguably works a lot harder <laughs> to show in all these properties. Nevertheless, I feel like they both work equally hard and are equally valuable and should split 50-50. But neither here nor there, I've always split 50-50 on all my listings. If not, I gave the buyer agent more. Yes, gave the buyer agent more on plenty of deals um, because I cut the commission down. I was like, I'm not going to cut the buyer's commission down. I'm going to give them more. That's just how I operate, just to give you a little insight to how, how my mind works. But when you really break this thing down and you really think about where this could go and the fact that now we move the negotiation of the buyer agent commission from pre-offer during the listing process, that's where we literally determine that. That was the point that uh, it was determined what the buyer agent was going to make, Um we moved it from that point in the process to the point of the offer now, which is extremely messy. I can't even believe that, um, you know, the people in charge, you know, the DOJ, I can't believe that, that they feel like this is a good thing to add this into the negotiation of the actual property. This is what they're, this is what they're advertising. This is what they're saying that we should do. Just put in the offer. Put in the offer. That's what DOJ said. That's what NAR said. That's what everybody says. And it's going to get messy because now you just moved the point of what the buyer is going to make from pre-offer to offer. And in the offer, okay, now the seller has all the negotiation power. Because they can literally just say, well, this is what I'm going to pay you, Mr. Buyer Agent, who's not even working for me. And if you don't take it, then no deal. And I'll just wait on another buyer. And what are you going to say as the buyer agent in that situation? No deal and not let your client get their dream home or whatever the case may be. You know, if it's an investment property, sec it doesn't matter. Are you going to walk away from the deal because... Uh, you know, it, it, are you going to let, are you going <laughs> to allow your client not to get the deal because you won't accept the commission where it's a take it or leave it situation? I would say you're probably going to have to take those deals. And, and, and the fact that you can look and say, oh, well, the seller's going to net this. Yeah, that's fine and dandy. But when they don't, when they agreed to it in the beginning, it was different. They knew what they were getting into. When, when, and even if we say seller concessions, it's still becoming more. They're becoming more and more aware that hey, I can negotiate this during the deal, etc. Um, when they're actually looking at the dollar amount, okay, during the offer, it's going to be a different story. Um, and so they're going to have all the power. And so I feel like since the sellers 
the sellers are still going to determine what the buyer agent makes, right? They didn't change this, right? Just because we had a buyer agent, a buyer sign an agreement saying that they're going to pay 2%, um, what are we going to as an industry, you know, go after the buyer, even though they're contractually, say we get 1% or a half a percent from the seller, are we going to go after our client for the other one, one and a half percent? Are we going to take them to court for that? Um, you know, that it's messy. It's super messy. And so this is why I feel like buyer agent commissions are going to get squeezed. I believe that they're going to get squeezed. I also believe you're going to have more buyers go directly to listing agent. Again, no one knows how this is going to play out. This is all hypothetical, okay? Hypothetical. Take all this with a grain of salt. But I believe we're going to have buyers, a flow of buyers go directly to the listing agent. We're going to have a clause in the listing agreements that we're going to make more when those unrepresented buyers come to us. And so therefore, I think the average commission of a listing agent is going to go up. Going to go up from here. They're going to do more work. They're going to do more work. They're going to deal with unrepresented buyers and showing properties uh, you know, showing their listings and et cetera, et cetera, explaining things to unrepresented buyers, getting them to sign documents, um, you know, writing the offers, et cetera, et cetera. But they will, at the end of the day, their average commission, I believe, will increase. So I think the buyer agent commission is going to decrease, right? How much? A little bit. I ain't talking about a big jump, a little bit. And I believe the, the listing agent commission is going to increase. How much? A little bit, <laughs> not no whole bunch but it's going to be enough to make a difference. Um, and I think that's very interesting. We'd love to hear your thoughts about how this is going to play out in the comments below. Now, I want to tell you how I would think if I were a buyer's agent in this market moving forward. All right. Um, number one, if I were a buyer agent, I didn't have the ability, right? I have the skills to out go out here and feel like I was confident enough to negotiate commissions, to have the co uh, co the conversation about commissions with my potential buyers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would be looking at this jacked out of my mind, excited for the opportunity to uh, to 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 develop those skills, right? To to take those trainings to to immerse myself into these situations where I can literally learn how to do this. Why would I get upset because I can't stay where I am? Right? Why would I get upset? And and I know I'm talking to the 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 one percenters out there, right? Who have this mentality that I'm gonna win no matter what, right? You, you will never hold a winner back. You'll never hold a loser back from losing. You'll never hold an average person back from continuing to be average. You can you can do all you can do and, and say all you can say, and they're gonna stay be what they're gonna be. But my point is, is that I had I did an Instagram post about this and I was like, hey, this is how I would be. I'd be excited, I'd go out here, I'd develop my skills, and I would crush all the agents who were complaining and not willing to adapt. And I had somebody say, yeah, you're talking to the one percenters, but that's not most agents. That's like take, telling somebody about basketball and just go out there and think like MJ and Kobe. And I said, yeah, that's 100% true. I am talking to the 1%, but here's the difference in, in, my, in, in what I'm saying in your analogy. And that is that, you know, you could tell people to their blue in the face and they could never go dunk a basketball. But I'm telling you right now, anyone can take on the mentality to go out here and develop their self into the next best version of their self who can go out here and be confident having these conversations with the buyers. And, and I just personally would be over the moon ready to take that challenge on. You've got to continue challenging yourself. Why would you be upset about not being able to stay right where you are? If anything, you've got to look at this from an optimistic uh, point of view. You've got to look at glass half full. A another comment on the same post. Was it the same post? I think it was the same post. He said there was an agent that said, you know, you know, something about buyers. And, and they said that 60 to uh, that 40 to 60. What was it? Uh, 40 to 60, 20, 20 to 40. He said 20 to 40 percent of contracts are falling through 20 to 40% of contracts are falling through. I was like, okay, so 60 to 80% of contracts are going through. I was like, he, you're looking at the 60 to 40% that ain't going through. And I'm looking at the 60 to 80% that are going through it's glass half full situation. And, and furthermore, 
market cycles are super temporary, right? If, if things are falling through uh, a lot right now, if, if, uh, if, if inventory is low, if inventory is high, if things are crushing it, if things are slow, whatever it is, just give it a second. It will, it will come right back around. It's cycle. It's all cycles and it's all temporary. Don't worry about the cycles. You get in there and build your career, which brings me to my, my final point here. And that is don't look at yourself as a buyer agent. Don't look at yourself as a listing agent. You need to look at yourself as a real estate agent who helps anyone buy or sell real estate. I never turned a buyer down ever in my life. When I was a real estate agent, I never referred a buyer out unless it was like three hours away. Um, commercial deals. I, I referred a couple of commercial deals out that I, you know, wasn't my forte. Um, you know, there's some situations, but in terms of like, you know, just like uh, buyers, right, that were in my wheelhouse, you know, in my niche, um, even that weren't really necessarily in my niche. I mean, I sold a lot of like 20, 40, $50,000 trailers. Yes, I did. I did. And guess what? Some of those, there were clients, like one of my best clients, the first condo he ever bought for me was a $40,000 condo, just, just really low end. And this is, of course, 20 years ago. Um, but ended up buying millions and millions, tens of millions of, pro of deals with me and referred so much business to me. And I prom and, and, and if I remember correctly, that client was referred to me by somebody who just didn't want to mess with that $60,000 or $40,000, whatever it was, condo, um, uh, buyer didn't want to deal with it. Well, I did. And I turned it into a lifelong client that, that the ROI was amazing. That's why I always say every relationship that you put in place with clients in your market are worth 10 to 20 deals to you a piece over the life of your career, right? Through repeats, referrals, and referrals of referrals. Don't sleep on this. Don't, don't sleep on clients. <laughs> don't sleep on clients. So what I'm saying is, is don't look at yourself as a buyer agent. Don't pigeonhole yourself into, um, you know, a buyer's agent, you know, or, or whatever. No, develop the skills to go out and help anyone buy and sell. And if you don't have those skills, how do you develop those skills? You put yourself in those situations where you have to to learn. You don't have a choice. You know, set listing appointments and go to them. Well, I don't really know how to do them. Well, you're not going to know how to do them until you go do them. Right. Um, you know, I don't know how to negotiate deals. Okay. Well, go out there and make offers and negotiate deals. Like you, you're not going to learn it until you do it. Right. So listen, learn new things, do new things, master new things at all times. That's a cycle that I keep running back over and over and over again. And it has been true to me. I hope this video helped you. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you on the next video. Let's go.